Hello, welcome uh, back on the channel. Today, um, I uh, I want to share the experience I had with uh, these two transistors, um, PJT transistor from from Mitsubishi. This is the uh, Mitsubishi Two SC fifty one twenty five, as you can see, and uh, this is a pair because I. Um, lost unfortunately my pair originally from the radio of the uh, 2155 i'm gonna put now one uh, on the side also i have the uh, 3102 which is for the uh, vhf uhf section of the 857 that i'm repairing uh, this 857 is one of the uh, first um, uh, in the production so at that time, it was using the Mitsubishi, even though we can put uh, the Toshiba 2782 um, as they did afterwards. Uh, anyway, I found these two and I'll let you, uh, I'll tell you now more about it. Okay, so these are the uh, 5125. This is the one of the transistors that I removed from the radio because it's faulty. Uh, the new ones came in these uh, two ESD uh, safe uh, bags, as well as uh, the 3102. Now the transistors, they look uh, partly on the exterior, they look uh, okay. When I bought them, uh, they were advertised as uh, new and original. And uh, in the case of the 5125, for the 3102, it was advertised as used. There's uh, something in here. Uh, the, some, someone wrote uh, this here with a pencil. But to me, this one looks original. Um, all the, uh, the label here, the marking Mitsubishi mark symbol and the way it is all put together and centered over the numbers and I mean uh, let me get something pointy yeah I mean um, it's difficult to recognize original and fakes uh, sometimes they're done really well but to me this looks original uh, the alignment of the uh, Mitsubishi marking of the numbers and the thickness and we could also try and uh, cancel with aceton I don't want to do it now but uh, yeah this is the 3102 the VHF UHF transistor uh, talking about the 5125 if you look carefully the uh, the mark is much thicker very very black and if you look carefully for example this is what i what i've noticed look here on the uh, mitsubishi marking it looks like uh, the upper symbol and also the two ones here they are not touching very well um also, the marking is is starting uh, at the beginning of the number five and not in the middle. Let me put both one close to the other. I put them like this. You can see and judge by yourself. I mean, I don't know if uh, Mitsubishi had different. Uh, I mean. Mitsubishi made uh, different uh, labels on the transistor at some point but anyway this is the first sign when I first opened the uh, the bag okay I know I've noticed this thick um, right here and uh, it looks as you can see by the mark in here that uh, it 
has been tight with screws and but these marks that you see here uh, it was me touching with the uh, testing leads so when i open the bag i have noticed the symbol first and then uh, i went for a check first simple check with the uh, multimeter in continuity uh, that means uh, with the beep okay so beeping meter like this and the first the second thing that i've noticed is that these four are emitters and usually they are no, not usually. I mean, if you look on the uh, schematic, the emitter goes to ground, okay? Okay, fair enough. On the data sheet of the transistor, it says also that the fin is going to ground, that the chassis is ground. So if you look, this is ground, okay. But if you touch the chassis of the transistor, it's not grounded. None of the uh, none of the emitter is actually in contact with the chassis. Okay, and this is true for the both of them. Okay, that's the second thing I've noticed. Then uh, I checked with the uh, multifunction tester. And um, let me show you the result. Obviously, also, if I take the, uh, the one from coming from the radio, let me say the original one, I guess it is original because when I removed it from the radio, the signs were that uh, nobody ever touched the transistor in there. And as you can see, they are all grounded and connected to the chassis okay now if we have a look at the 3102 at the 3102 again emitter base and collector so emitter and they are all tied to the chassis of the transistor okay so this is working as it should by data sheet um then uh, let's test these two transistors with the multifunction tester okay the transistor is now connected and let's try so it says it's a bjt npn which is correct red is the emitter uh, sorry, not the red. Uh, yeah, the red here, which uh, means the green actually. So the number one. Oops. So the number one is the emitter, which is correct. The number two is the base, which is the black, correct. And the number three, it goes on the collector, correct. As you can see, HFE uh, is zero zero current uh, for the test we've got this drop for the uh, for these uh, uh, diode but uh, most uh, importantly we have a uh, base emitter voltage of 332 millivolts which uh, is not what I would expect yeah, here comes the second. Okay, BJT NPN. This time I get a uh, base emitter voltage 609 millivolt. The test current is 5.4 on the collector and it gives an uh, H uh, beta of 5. And okay, 
Uh, I'll check now also the uh, 3102. Okay, 3102 is connected. Let's start the check. And you can see similar results. Same test current, HFE is exactly the uh, same 5 and uh, 660 millivolts for the uh, voltage drop of phase emitter junction. Uh, let's have a look at the data sheet now. We can see here uh, on the uh, outline drawing that uh, the uh, fins, uh, sorry, the emitters, number four, number two, number two, number four, are emitter, the flange emitter, and also number five, the fin, is also connected as emitter. And number five, you can see here, the thing I said before about and uh, if we have then a look to the uh, DC current gain versus collector current, we see that here we start the graph with the 100 uh, milliamp current, collector current, and it gives us uh, a H, an HFE of about 12, 13. So a five milliamp. Uh, let me check. That, that's that's one decade. So ten milliamp would be would be something like here. Okay. So if we just imagine to continue the curve, we would probably five is probably uh, reasonable. Okay. So basically, of three transistors, I have one, two that apparently are working but one is not and now i'm on a dispute with a distributor uh, to get a refund uh, i'm trying to uh, send them both both back to change them with the uh, with the toshiba and let's see what they say i'm still waiting for an answer they said that the shipping cost would be uh, the as high as the uh, value of the transistor. So they rather uh, refund me the cost of the transistor. Uh, I'm trying to negotiate because I'm not happy like that because then I need to buy another one, another pair. Because obviously I don't need one. I have to buy another pair, I have to buy another delivery cost. Uh, let's see what they say. Uh, And then uh, hopefully I can uh, have a working pair and put it back into the radio. Meanwhile, I'm also buying a, a new um, Mika capacitors, which uh, have to be installed like this one here, which have to be installed on the uh, collector uh, towards uh, ground on the um, VHF UHF transistor in here uh, unfortunately two uh, need replace I only have one so I'm uh, in the process of getting those as well and then I will be able to adjust already so for now this is uh, the updates on the uh, repairing of the 857 and in the next video I'll let you know what happens uh, with uh, with the distributor and uh, how the whole thing ended well thank you for watching this was just a short or quick one uh, i just want to share give you an update and share uh, my experience with the transistors um, uh, i bought it from china not from uh, AliExpress or eBay. I bought it still on China, but uh, from uh, a, distri a big distributor, which uh, was supposed to be more reliable. Let's see how it goes. I'll let you know. And thank you for watching so far, and uh, talk to you in the next uh, video.